I'm Nat, and this is James. For over two years, we've been sailing the world aboard our floating home, Zephyr. Someone once said that every person can transform the world to one of excitement and adventure. Follow our adventure by clicking the subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. Become a patron by clicking the patron logo. You will get early access to weekly videos, exclusive content, and much more. My baby, I don't cover that I die for you. The top five mistakes that we have made sailing. Here we go. All right, we're going to start off with number one, which is going to be not doing enough research. So what do you reckon? We just go to the Dominican Republic up next? Love it. Perfect. Do you think we need to do any research there? Nah, let's just go. Awesome. Authority, Dominican Port Authority. This is sailing vessel Zephyr. Over. No, we haven't done that. No, we haven't completed that either. So we do not have permission to enter the country. Nat, we should have done our research. They're not letting us in. We're gonna have to go back. Yeah, guys, so research on a sailboat is absolutely paramount. Nat and I do so much, it's insane. We're talking um, just from the country you're gonna visit, the entry formalities, safety, um, especially with today with COVID and PCR shots and entry requirements regarding that. Um, and also a lot of research into the stuff about our boat as well as we're sailing around the world we're putting a lot of wear and tear on this boat one example of this was when we were arriving into puerto rico we had not checked uh, our visa how long we had left on our visa and it turned out we only had five days left the bad thing was james's parents were coming all the way from canada for two weeks to visit us and well, we only had five days, so we had to leave the country. That was a lesson that learned. That was a lesson learned, and also we should have done our research. All right, guys, number two, sailing to a deadline and not weather. What's the weather looking like for the trip? Mm, not too good, I don't think we should go. Really, we promised our friends we'd be there. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, well, I guess we can go. So what this typically means is you're sailing in conditions that you wouldn't normally sail in otherwise because you're trying to sail to a deadline, not to the weather. An example of this that's happened to us um, is when we were sailing from the Balearics to Sardinia, we had the intention of meeting some friends by a certain date and it's quite a big passage and we ended up sailing in horrible beam reach conditions, massive waves, um, and we actually ended up having uh, failures on the boat because the conditions were so terrible and we would never have sailed in those conditions normally we created risk on ourselves and risk to the boat um, never again and since then we have never done that again no. so um, always sail the weather if you can and not to a deadline all right number three is not doing basic checks before a passage Hey babe, what do you reckon? Should we uh, check the lines for chafe in that before our big passage coming up? No, we'll be right. I think we should just crack on and go. It's not important. Yeah, all right, let's go. Well, our sheet broke. I guess we should have done the checks before we left. So what we mean by this is no matter how long or how short your passage is, you should always be undertaking some basic checks of your sailboat. So an example of this was one time when we didn't check the engine before a passage and when we actually checked it, the alternator was actually unscrewing off. <laughs> the bolt had come loose and uh, yeah, you don't want those kind of problems when you're out at sea. So um, we learned from that one, right? That could have been the end of the engine. All right, guys, number four on the list is not wearing a kill cord while operating the tender. With our particular tender motor, if you have the power on and you're moving and you're actually to release the tiller, the motor will actually swivel to one side. Now, that's a safety feature so that if you should happen to fall overboard and you're not wearing your kill cord, the tender would actually just then keep spinning in the same spot and not you know, motoring off for miles and miles, so. <laughs> this is a vital piece of safety equipment when operating a dinghy, and it is often overlooked. Yeah, so a great example of not wearing the kill cord happened to yours truly. 
I was operating the tender just going between two boats really short distance and I actually fell out the back of the tender and as I fell out I hit the tiller handle it accelerated the boat started spinning around and I actually got wounded on my leg as you might have seen in the previous video and we've heard of other incidences where people were not quite as lucky as I was so guys always 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 wear your kill cord number five arriving at an unknown anchorage at night time yeah. how's the progress going on our trip yeah we're going to be arriving in the dark and we don't know this anchorage i think what we should do is slow down really we're pretty tired yeah all right let's just go for it okay let's do it james i just can't see anything up here i don't know if there's any boats or stuff in the water i don't know yeah, so this is particularly dangerous. Um, there's a lot of unknown hazards when you arrive at an anchorage and uh, you are really putting yourself at a lot of risk by arriving at an anchorage that you know nothing about at night. Uh, an example of this was in the BVI's. We arrived, we were slower than what we thought and we arrived in an anchorage at night. And it was one of the scariest situations I think we've had up to date. Absolutely. Uh, you are, you can't see anything. There was unknown boats with no lights on, uh, which we nearly hit one. And uh, yeah, just a little bit of a scary situation. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Well guys, that's some of our mistakes that we've made over the last two and a half years of sailing. Um, I think there's a lot more. There's so many more yeah. that we kind of had to narrow it down, obviously, to the top five worst ones, maybe. But there's been some very funny ones as well. Um, I can think of one offhand. <laughs> I don't know if it's the worst mistake we've ever made, but it's certainly one of our funniest ones. And it was the first time we ever anchored. All right, we were then. in uh, Virgin Gorda in the BVI's and we'd <laughs> never dropped the hook before and I opened the anchor locker and I didn't secure the anchor locker when we were going to drop the uh, anchor and the anchor locker <laughs> fell because a gust of wind hit it and it locked the end of my toe up. Right. Oh, there's blood everywhere, half my toe is hanging off and it was the first time I <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, so not a good start to our anchoring. No, so. definitely not. Um, the you? one I can think of that was hilarious, um, and I don't think we've got it in any of our videos, so it was kind of like a bit of a, a first. Or did we omit it so people wouldn't think we're terrible? Well, <laughs> no, we didn't omit it, but we, we were traveling, so we just got to St. Martin and we had to check in but we hadn't slept for 24 hours straight because it was our first overnighter without a mast and it was pretty horrendous conditions <laughs> and we arrived we dropped anchor in the rolliest anchorage ever which is simpson bay we didn't have a dinghy motor at this point and we had that very very we had old yellow who was very heavy fiberglass dinghy leaking leaking and the nearest point was a beach and I thought we would be fine to just <laughs> row over to this beach and then just like beach the dinghy and we ended up flipping the dinghy over it was a disaster and we nearly lost the dinghy James I've never seen you that upset in my life I think you lost it completely yeah, yeah. Um, and then we rocked and nobody, up. Nobody helped us. Nobody helped us. And then we rocked up to check in, completely soaking wet, drenched. Oh my god! Yes. And the only thing that was saved was the backpack where we had our passports in. Thank God. But everything else, we just went straight in. I think you chucked that straight onto shore. So when we fell yeah, in the water, yeah, yeah. it did get wet. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Oh, so that was a pretty bad mistake. Do you remember that time we were in St. Martin? Oh god, they all happened in St. Martin, of course. Yeah. We were in St. Martin and we were going to leave and we were, it was the first time we were towing the tender and we had just bought our new tender motor and I didn't, I forgot to lift the tender motor up. Uh -huh. So I was, we were dragging the tender with the motor down in the water. Oh yeah, we used to do that. <laughs> we used to do that quite a lot though. It wasn't just a one-off. Well, okay. It was the one I remember. And... But I think we used to do it quite a lot because we didn't realize. It's a bit like when we were backing down on the windlass and not putting our snubber down and then I think we had a conversation with some other sailor and he was like 
What do you mean you're backing down with no snubber? Like you always back down on the snubber, otherwise you can pull your whole windlass out. And we were like, oh my God, because we, you know, trial and error, we didn't know and we were kind of just winging things and then next minute. Do you remember when we pulled into Cardi? Right. Uh, we crossed the Atlantic and then yeah. we did the Azores yeah. and then we decided to do a thousand article mile sail from the Azores to Cardi in Spain. Yeah. And we had horrible sail and we were going into the marina and they told us we had a berth on one side so um, and this is only the second marina I think we'd ever stayed in yeah and we only put fenders on one side of the boat and when we went into the spot the wind turned and the, the blew us right it blew off. us to the other side of the berth and we had no fenders on the side of the boat and we just crashed, we up crashed to the side of the dock crashed into the dock everyone came running out and <laughs> so ever since then we put fenders on both sides of the boat no yeah. matter what space we're pulling into in a marina and no. lines on all six cleats so we only used to put them on one side and now we put them on both sides just so that we're ready in any type of situation yeah. um i don't know if that's overkill but that's how we do it now because yeah. we just we don't go into marinas very often so we like to be uh <laughs> any more that you can think of um no. What are you looking at? I, was, I, started, little... I started writing down a little list of all the okay. mistakes we made and I started laughing. Um, I can remember one more that um, I think maybe it's because we got confident and very early on because a, a lot of things had turned out quite well. We docked for the first time to get fuel and everything seemed to be like kind of falling into place and um, we decided to go virgin order for the shakedown we needed to get water or something I don't know what it was and you were kind of like I can dock this boat we've done it already it's easy oh, and it was blown a hooli and James was like I'll just back this in like, with one hand <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like I'm pretty sure it's not as easy as that and I think yeah we were just both feeling quite confident like we were like okay we can probably do this and I mean, yeah, we ended up hitting the dock and we, thankfully we didn't hit the catamaran. So it would have been hell if we had hit the catamaran, but we didn't, we just hit the dock. Well, I guess bottom line is that we have made a mountain of mistakes over our two and a half years of sailing. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is to try and not make them twice. Sometimes we do, um, but most of the time I think we're pretty good about only making those mistakes once. So. Um, especially the ones that result in injuries to me, but uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's some of our war stories, guys. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's like we like we said, there's probably many more. Um, and unfortunately, I wish we could catch capture those moments on camera. No. Alright guys, so that's our top five mistakes that we've made during our sailing adventures. Yeah, there's obviously many more mistakes that we've made. Um, we'd love to hear about yours out there. So you know what? Drop them in the comments below. Let's hear your top five or any mistakes that you guys have made while you've been sailing. And any more that you can think of for sure that uh, we didn't include. Yeah, if you think there's something you've seen in one of our videos and you want to call us out on it, throw it in Go the ahead. comments below. <laughs> We'd also like to take this chance to thank our amazing patrons for all your support over the last two and a half years. Without you guys, this journey wouldn't continue. That's right. Thank you so, so much. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next week. Bye. Join us next week as we answer that all-important question. How much does it really cost to live on a boat? If you are new to our channel, consider subscribing so you can join the adventure each week aboard Zephyr. If you would like early access to weekly videos, bonus content, and free merch, click the Patreon logo here. This journey is only made possible thanks to our amazing patrons.